Amber Heard, An Unconvincing Pity Play, Part 2, Video Analysis. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, and if you haven't already accessed Part 1, then stop listening right now and go back to the previous video so you ensure that you understand what has been said already. To enable you to refresh your memory, I'm going to play the relevant clip again. It's not particularly long. Of course, you can skip through it if you don't feel the need to watch it again. But it's worthwhile because you can apply your learning to it and also watch it to see if you can pick out the relevant subtleties and nuances before I continue to explain them for you. In this section, I'm focusing on what happens post one minute and nine seconds. So basically the remaining one minute and 20 seconds. So you might want to target that more in your review ahead of my breakdown and analysis for you. Explain what the context of this was. I was begging Johnny to not make me prove what I've had to sit on the stand in front of all of you and prove and talk about. I was begging not to do this and have to sit where I'm sitting today. I didn't want this. I don't want to be here. I didn't want to be there then. And I was trying to point out something to somebody who I thought did not have a firm grasp on reality. Objection calls for speculation. It's Overruled. Good. Thank you. I was trying to point out how absurd how absurd it would be for him to keep making me prove this by calling me a liar. I was trying to get him to not call me a liar because everything that I had said to date and everything I've said to date now is the truth. And I was begging him not to make me prove it, that there were photos, that there were witnesses, that there was my testimony. There were years of me with injuries on the dates where we were fighting, and they were documented. I mean, uh, pictures from 2012. So I was trying to say to him either, you'd suppose that people would rather believe this is a hoax, elaborate, well-orchestrated, year-long campaign for what? Or that, what? It just seemed crazy. And I thought no one was advising him in his best interest. I thought no one was telling him the truth. I know he's surrounded by yes men, and I thought nobody was saying to Johnny, this is crazy, don't do this. And I didn't want to hurt him. I didn't want to hurt him. I loved him. I loved him so much. I, that's why I'm explaining to him why I didn't file criminal charges. I didn't file a police report, even though it was being used against me. I didn't want this to go to a prosecutor. I didn't want this to hurt Johnny. I don't want this to hurt Johnny. Looking at the segment that took place from 1 minute and 9 seconds of the footage and pausing at 1 minute and 28 seconds, in this section, Heard says, I was begging him not to make me prove it, that there were photos, that there were witnesses, that there was my testimony, that there were years of me with injuries on the dates that we were fighting, and they were documented. I mean... There were documents for 2012. Now, what's happening here is almost akin to a lawyer making a submission to the judge and the jury. It's one of her soliloquies again. She's not actually recalling the evidence of what was said at the time. She did not say to Johnny Depp, please don't make me prove it. Don't make me use the photos. Don't make me use the witnesses. Don't make me use the testimony. Don't make me use the years of me with injuries on the dates that we were fighting and that have all been documented. She never said that. Not only would somebody not really say that in the course of a fight, but moreover, this is her narcissism at work, of course, again. 
So what she's saying here, she did not say at the time. And it's a revision of history that her narcissism caused her to believe that she said it at the time and is now making her say this at that particular juncture in order to persuade the jury. Her narcissism is trying to make it seem like she's got compassion for Depp, that she cared about not being made to be put through all of this that she didn't want to do him down with this huge body of evidence. And if you're listening, members of the jury, that I have witnesses, I have photos, I have testimony, I have years, 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 do you hear, of me with injuries. On all of the dates, mark my words, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, mark my words, that for every injury that I have sustained to this by my own admission, quite beautiful face. There are dates and evidence to support it. That's effectively, dear viewers, what she's engaging in. Her narcissism is trying to cause her to convince the jury of the evidence, rather than it being a faithful retelling of the evidence from before. Note right at the end of this section... There is that petulant look as her narcissism misfires again, failing to get right the appropriate look of upset, and instead a petulant look, like a child denied watching their favourite TV show. Because what should be happening is, you should all be believing me. Stopping at two minutes. In this section, she states, So I was trying to say to him, Either you'd suppose that people would rather believe that this is a hoax, an elaborate, well-orchestrated, year-long campaign. For what? Or that what? It just seemed crazy. And I thought no one was advising him in his best interests. Nobody was telling him the truth. And always surrounded by yes-men, nobody was saying to Johnny, this is crazy. Don't do this. This part of her evidence, again, was a revision of history. And it wasn't said at the time. It's what she believes was going on. And where she talks about saying, you believe that this is a hoax, an elaborate, well-orchestrated, year-long campaign, her narcissism gives her away quite beautifully at that point. Why? Because that's what it is a hoax, an elaboration, a relatively well-orchestrated, in at least her mind, campaign against Depp. Her narcissism can't help exhibit the grandiosity that's associated with the type of narcissist that she is. And so, although she appears to be saying in her evidence, what, are you trying to make out that what I've done, some kind of hoax? Why not stop there? But no, because her narcissism needs to praise herself by saying, well, actually, if you are going to call it a hoax, it's a rather elaborate one, isn't it? And well orchestrated, and it's a year-long campaign. Her narcissism can't help but look to praise herself, and the grandiosity comes through. When she then talks about saying, Nobody was advising him in his best interests. This is her false compassion being exhibited. And what's actually happening, as we witness yet another soliloquy from her, the fact that where people will have been advising him to take certain steps, that's a threat to her control. Other parties, other people, advising Depp about the course of action causes a threat to her control over Depp, who was an intimate partner primary source. And therefore, her narcissism has to reject that. And it does so by causing her to believe that what they are doing isn't right, isn't fair, because she loves Deb, she cares about Deb, she has compassion for Deb, and these people are all doing the wrong things for him. I know this. Her narcissism convinces her that they are wrong and she is right, and that everything that they say is not in his interests, because actually it's not in her interests. Remember, Depp is just an extension of her, and therefore anything that threatens her control over him is a threat to her very existence. 
And as a consequence, what all of these people were saying, which viewed objectively may well be seen as sound and sage advice indeed, isn't because it threatens her control over Depp. And therefore, her narcissism smears these individuals, as she gives her evidence here, by saying that nobody's advising him in best interests. Her facade operates reasonably well at this juncture, because what she doesn't say is, oh, they're all a bunch of self-interested shitheads who are only out for themselves. No, her facade management makes it look like she's caring about Depp, and is therefore effective in that regard. Of course, to my expertly trained eye, I can see straight through it. We end at 2 minutes and 31 of this footage, and she states, And I didn't want to hurt him. I loved him. I loved him so much. That's why I'm explaining to him I didn't file criminal charges or a police report, even though it was being used against me. I didn't want this to go to a prosecutor. I didn't want this to hurt Johnny. I don't want this to hurt Johnny. Fake compassion, tempted pity play. And once again, those tears, they do not come. Something I will be addressing in a separate video. She believes that she didn't want to hurt him, notwithstanding, of course, the evidence that shows she repeatedly did so by severing the tip of his finger, by shitting in his bed, by calling him names, by physically assaulting him, by interfering in his relationships with other people, by belittling him, invalidating him, giving him word salads. But all of that is struck from the record in her mind by her narcissism, as it tells her she cares about him and that she loves him. Of course, she doesn't know that as a narcissist, she is incapable of love because she has no emotional empathy. What also is happening here is that there is an absence of criminal charges or police reports at the time to support her accusations of abuse. This is a very interesting point and is one that frequently occurs. It's a common tactic to say to somebody, well, you claim that you've been repeatedly abused by this person, but you didn't go to the police or mention anything about this abuse until this court case started. It's quite common, for instance, in individuals where there's fights over the children, for instance, that one party will suddenly say that the other was an abusive parent that, did, that neglected the children, that beat them, that sexually interfered with them, and that this has been going on for years, yet they stayed silent throughout. And interestingly, when a divorce has occurred and that there is a battle over child custody, all of these allegations come to the fore. What's going on? Well, it depends who's saying it. You see, there are instances where genuine victims do remain silent and don't say anything at the time because their own emotional thinking causes them to believe that that's not the appropriate thing to do. Fear keeps them in check. Fear of further repercussions, further beatings. Fear of leaving and not being able to have anywhere to live. Fear because of financial control. So where a victim, a genuine victim, a non-narcissist has failed to say anything about the abuse that they've suffered for a number of years previously and only mentions it when a case is ongoing. That doesn't necessarily mean it has not happened, but rather there are genuine reasons as to why they've stayed quiet. However, when a narcissist engages in this behaviour, claiming that they've been abused, or for instance that the other parent is abusive towards the children or is a bad parent, those things never happened. And what happens is that the moment that that other parent or the other spouse, or the other ex, instigates court proceedings against the narcissist, that is a threat to control. What the narcissism then does is it revises history and will utilise often half-truths or nowhere near the truth to portray a picture of them being the victim of abuse, whereas, of course, invariably, they were the abusive one by virtue of being the narcissist. So where you have a situation of no complaint being made at the time, the determination of what's behind that falls to be understood by reference to are you dealing with a narcissist or a non-narcissist? Because different reasons apply to explain that silence. Here, as a narcissist, the real reason why she didn't file criminal charges or police report is because there was no need to, because there was no abuse, 
or even where he fought back, she didn't do so because her narcissism dictated that it wasn't necessary. Now, when she's queried as to, well, if all this abuse was going on, Miss Heard, why did you not go to the police? Her narcissism has to concoct an explanation to cause her to nullify that threat to control. And what it does, it says, well, I loved him and I didn't want to hurt him, so that's why I didn't do anything. She's a narcissist. She doesn't love him. She doesn't care about him, although she thinks that she does. This final sentence, this final section, provides you with an excellent opportunity to understand what's really going on with regard to this revision of history and the distinction between the behaviours of a narcissist and a genuine victim. All in all, this 2 minutes and 31 seconds amounts to an unconvincing pity play, which you are now able to see through with the benefit of my analysis. I will leave you with another look at the footage so that you can now apply what you've heard to it and increase your understanding further. In the meanwhile, do ensure that other people see this video and that you like it. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. Explain what the context of this was. I was begging Johnny to not make me prove what I've had to sit on the stand in front of all of you and prove and talk about. I was begging not to do this and have to sit where I'm sitting today. I didn't want this. I don't want to be here. I didn't want to be there then. And I was trying to point out something to somebody who I thought did not have a firm grasp on reality. Objection calls for speculation. Right. Overruled. Good. Thank you. I was trying to point out how absurd, how absurd it would be for him to keep making me prove this by calling me a liar. I was trying to get him to not call me a liar because everything that I had said to date and everything I've said to date now is the truth. And I was begging him not to make me prove it, that there were photos, that there were witnesses, that there was my testimony. There were years of me with injuries on the dates where we were fighting and they were documented. I mean, uh, pictures from 2012. So I was trying to say to him either, you'd suppose that people would rather believe this is a hoax, elaborate, well-orchestrated, year-long campaign for what? Or that, what? It just seemed crazy. And I thought no one was advising him in his best interest. I thought no one was telling him the truth. I know he's surrounded by yes men, and I thought nobody was saying to Johnny, this is crazy, don't do this. And I didn't want to hurt him. I didn't want to hurt him. I loved him. I loved him so much. I, that's why I'm explaining to him why I didn't file criminal charges. I didn't file a police report, even though it was being used against me. I didn't want this to go to a prosecutor. I didn't want this to hurt Johnny. I don't want this to hurt John.